What's going on guys? SmartHelping.com back here and I've got an interesting discounted cash flow analysis and a discounted cash flow analysis sensitivity. Uh, I tried to make it as sophisticated as I could as well as simple as possible to use. Um, so there's going to be two tabs. One's going to test um, the discounted cash flow at various discount rates of a single um, set of contributions and distributions. Note contributions just mean equity or cash in and distributions means cash out. So this is cash put into the project, distributions are the cash taken or, or, or distributed out. Model two is going to do the same thing but across four scenarios. We've got some cool charts here. So I tried really hard here to do cool formatting, conditional formatting, simplicity. I tried really hard on the the visuals. Um, I've not, I have not seen anything quite like this before. Uh, so I'm hoping it will be useful. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, what is a discounted cash flow analysis? It's simply saying, as of right now, what are the future cash outflows and inflows valued at based on the various discount rates. Um, uh, this also could be could be called the required rate of return. And all this is saying is um, essentially the net present value is going to be calculated at, at each different discount rate. And so if you just look at the first uh, row you've got 1,250,000 out at time zero, so that's pre that's right immediately. So there's no discount there, and then you've got 500,000 out in year one. And remember, you can discount future cash outflows as well. So that's why we take a net here of uh, 325,000 negative. Um, so even though there were some distributions, there were more contributions required so it's a negative number you just take the present value of that and so on for each period all this does is as you get further out in time the cash is valued less based on the discount rate you can see the higher the discount rate the lower the cash is worth out in time at a 21% discount rate, five million dollars in ten years is only worth 743,000 today. So discounted cash flow is used in all kinds of different analyses, um, and it's it it's because it works and it makes sense. Uh, generally, um, discount rates can also be thought of in terms of risk. The lower the discount rate, the lower the risk of the future cash flows, the higher the discount rate, the greater the risk that the future cash flows will be what they are. So startups that like don't have a product yet are going to have a super high discount rate, but startups that like have a product, have customers, are making some revenue, probably have a bit of a lower discount rate on whatever the projections are. So this allows you to apply six different discount rates to the same set of cash flows and see six different at present values and that's just put into a chart right here as you can see at, at 10 percent you've got the highest net present value at 21 percent you've got actually a negative net present value now a negative net present value just means if you discount the net future cash flows the value of them is less than your startup costs, which is not good. That means that um, whatever the project takes to get going, uh, based on that discount rate of 21%, it, it's not worth it. It's too, essentially, this would say this is too risky. At 10%, you're good. The present value of the future cash flows are actually $1,341,000 uh, more than the initial cost. And you can see that's if we just sum these up, you get 
2,591. So that's the present value of the future cash flows. And then you mark that against the cash requirement. You get 1,341. So that's just the mechanics of what's going on here. Um, and then I took it to another level with model two, where you can actually plug in, you know, if you've got a business and you think, well, what's me up? What's my upside? What's the downside? What's the mid? I just did four different p potential cash um, situations. Um, this could also be varied with um, different terminal values, which often happens. You want to see, well, if I sell at this rate or that or, or that multiple or whatever, it'll change the net present values. So now we've took it another dimension where we've t we've put four different net cash flows. So now we have six discount rates and four different potential cash flows. So each cash flow and each discount rate has a, a different net present value. So then we did a net present value table here where you've got 24 different net present values because you've got six discount rates times four different um, cash flows. That's 24 resulting values. And you can see the chart here. We've got net present value one. And then you can see what that uh, what it is in scenario one for five percent to thirty percent, and you can see each of the scenarios in this chart here. Um, you can see here when you get below zero, um, and then also I put in the IRR of each scenario in a table. So this is pretty interesting to see, you know, where where the project lands based on different cash flows that might happen based on various discount rates, where do we start to go negative? You know, here at a 20% discount rate, scenario one, or, or scenario one goes ne negative as soon as you get over to, uh, 20%. And really the internal rate of return tells you exactly when you get net present value zero because that's what actually the internal rate of return tells you. It's when the, uh, present value of the future cash flows if they're discounted at this rate the IRR the future cash flows will be valued at the um, the cost the startup costs the present value of the future cash flows will equal the current um, essentially the net present value is zero at that point so if I were to plug this into here for scenario one you'll see scenario one is zero. Uh, if I plug all these in, this is kind of cool. You'll see this is where scenario one is zero, scenario two, three, and four at those rates. Don't do that. So that's um, how the math kind of interacts between net present value and internal rate of return. Uh, again, it's nice to see when each scenario starts to go into the negative um, at given discount rates. And this is saying that the strongest in this case the strongest scenario is right now scenario three it's got the highest net present value at the deepest discount rate and you can see the other way to just see that easier look at what has the highest internal rate of return scenario three at 24.2 percent uh, these tables down here are just where we're getting all the data so this is scenario one here's a discounted cat uh, discount of the cash flows at each discount rate and for scenario one uh, I gotta update this two three and four so that's it um, I feel like this is a nice structure for anyone to just come in if they're new to discounted cash flow analysis or wanted to do a more advanced um, like net present value sensitivity table I thought this was a really cool tool to use um, 
up to 10 years. It doesn't have to be 10 years. You could do it for any amount of years. Just plug in whatever cash flows are um, relevant to your situation. And if you wanted to extend it, you could just drag these out. And you would have to drag that out, drag these out, update the references. But it's not that difficult to do. Uh, but I felt like four different cash flow scenarios and six different discount rates was enough to give you essentially the most granularity you'd ever need if you were presenting um, this analysis to the bank or you know integrating this into whatever model you have. All right, uh, I'll see you on the next one. If you want to purchase, the link will be in the description box below, or you can check out, um, go to uh, Smart helping.com where I will have I've got over a hundred different um, industry based financial models a lot of uh, joint venture distribution models a lot of SaaS models inventory help uh, with tracking cash flow forecasting all kinds of models uh, in all different industries um, and I'll see you on the next one